today we're looking at inventory management table templates in Google Sheets and the new tables feature that they're currently rolling out. So I'm gonna walk you through the four templates they have, but before we jump into that, if you do not have tables yet in your Google Sheets, and you'll know if you click on insert and tables does not show up, make sure you check out the link in the description below so that way you can download this template for your own use and get a jump on the gun. All right, so before we jump in, I'm gonna run you through these four templates here in a moment, and then I'm gonna circle back around and show you how to do these things like group by status, which is pretty awesome, and how you can set that up on your own project, and how you can change column types and insert new columns and rows as you need, and then a couple quick tricks and tips to get you on your way. So first off, let's go ahead and run through these templates. And so this one's called the inventory tracker. And so you can insert the item IDs here and the item names. You can select the categories. We'll show you how to modify those in a couple minutes. You can set the price and stock number and you can select the status and then add a note as necessary. Next up, we have the vendor list. And so you can put the vendor name here, select the vendor type, and we'll show you how to modify that. And then over here, you can add a name smart chip and you can do that by at and their name or at and their email address. You can also do a map smart chip here or a play smart chip and tag the address if you like. Also add their website. And then you can add here this reliability with stars. I'll show you how to do a rating here after a little bit and then you can do some notes there. Third, we have purchase orders. And so you can select priority here on the left hand side and then the order name, and then you can select the category and the current order status, and then order date, and then estimated or actual arrive by date, the cost of that order, and then you can do a name smart chip for your point of contact, and then a notes section here as well. And lastly, we have sales order, and it's similar to the purchase order, and then we have priority order name. We have a product that you can select, and then the status here, order date, price, the platform, and then again, a point of contact if you want, and notes. So let's circle back around and show you in a little more detail on how to use this. So first up, let's look at our group by. And so I have a saved one here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this for the moment. And so if you wanna delete, just go to delete view right there. And then let's walk through how to create a new one. And so you can do this from a column and then do group by column. And so for example, if you wanna group by status here, you could do that group by column, or you can click on this icon here called views and create a group by view and do it just like that. And you can do this on any column that you want. So we could do type here as well, and then it's doing by type. And so if you add a new one here just like this, you'll see that thing now to refresh. And so now you can see that category one has multiple. And so we can do this as, again if we like and add some to category one, category two. And you can see they pop up there into those groups. And so similar to a filter view, which was right here, you can do that with one of these views as well. And you can select if you want to not see certain ones here, for example, if you don't want to see the out of stocks and customize that view. And then you can save it here, group by type, for example. And then again, it's accessible here. And so you can exit that view from the right hand side here under exit or exit view here. And again, if we want to delete this temporary, um, let's go ahead and save that real quick. And then we can delete it if we want. And then it shows up like that. So that's the grouping, which is a pretty cool feature. And then next, let's look at how to modify this. And so on these drop downs, if you've not used them before, just click on one of these and then this edit button here, the pencil icon, and then you can add, edit your categories here. Um, you can also set colors to go with those and you can do custom colors as well. So you can kind of set those up however you want um, and then they'll be good to go. So maybe you wanna set these on a little different colors like this. Um, and you can see they change automatically just like that. So. Over here, we have stock again, so we can modify that. And then here we have some currency. Maybe you want to change this to something else. You could add the column type. And so I'll run through this on the next tab here in a moment, since we're going to modify something there. The other thing I just want to show you real quick is you can just insert a column just like that. 
um, and then you can rename that column to whatever you want. And just like that. And then I'll show you how to um, modify those column types in the next one. Um, another thing to note is you can add a new column just by typing it out here and it'll automatically expand. You can also add new columns just like that and they automatically fill in and get associated with that. So that's pretty cool. And that works well there. So let's look at changing a column type and then I'll run through those as well. So in this reliability, um, I don't know why they did this drop down here when they have a smart chip already signed up for this. And so let's go ahead and change that. So edit column type, and we're gonna change this to a rating smart chip here. And then you can see that we can select our reliability rating here, just like that. And that's pretty cool there. So let's go ahead and run through the rest of these column types here. And so what you see in some of these is numbers. And so you can select between number, percent, and currency. And so that's gonna direct you on the input that you're gonna put in. And so if we do numbers here, you can see just like that. Let's go ahead and delete these. And then there is that placeholder. So that placeholder is just a kind of a reference for you to fill in. So you can delete it if you don't want it there. Otherwise, it kind of directs people on what it's expecting to be input. And so a number just shows up like that. If we change it to a percent, then it shows like that. It's expecting you to type in uh, 10%. And so if you see that 10% icon there, that will work, but if you see this, if you double click, for example, just make sure you add that 10% icon there. If you do not, it'll basically render it into a thousand percent, which is actually 10 if you convert it to a decimal. So next we have a currency. And so this one, you can just type in a number and it'll automatically add the currency. So that's pretty streamlined. Text, of course, is like the ones before. And so if you have that placeholder, it's just gonna show the name of the column in there as a placeholder. So sometimes that's a little confusing. I wish they would make it so you could do it custom. Next we have date. And so it gives you a little feedback there and you can double click, enter a date. You can do a date time if you like, if you wanna add the time or just a time if you wanna do that. And it gives you a little feedback on how to enter that in. Um, you can do a drop down, And so this would be how you'd enter it from scratch. Um, and you can put whatever values you want in there. One thing to note is on original dropdowns, you can do a deny or reject input if it's not match. Um, this one does not give you that option. So next we have um, a checkbox, which is pretty straightforward, and you can just check those as needed. And then smart chips, and we already did the rating. You can also do people. Uh, a new one is file, and it's showing false because of that checkbox. So we'll just have to delete that data real quick. And so that file, you can associate to a file. And then um, we have finance, which does like stock prices and stuff, a place, and you can do a map. Um, so let's go ahead and, oh, missed one there. So this one you can just do at like Rome, for example. Um, let's see if we can get it here. At Rome, there we go. Um, just took a second for it to capture that. So we do Rome, Italy, for example, and then now it has that smart chip there um, and then finally we can just do none and it just doesn't have anything there all right so let's go ahead and reset this to our rating chip there just so we can have that set up and then let's take a look at if there's anything else we need to do here so let's go ahead and see what it looks like to do some formulas based on this data so um, it's kind of like a name range if you guys have used name ranges before so let's go ahead and name this table uh, scroll over here and so on these you can name them whatever you need to um, but you cannot have um, a space in it you'll get an error or if you try to start with a one it won't allow you to do that either so we'll just call this sales and we'll call it good for now and so maybe we want to see um, statuses and the total there or the total for the price so we could just do some and then what you use is that table name. And then you can see inside brackets, it's actually showing us the column headers. And so we could do sales price, for example, and that's gonna be the total in this price column. We could do a unique on that sales table. And then let's open up that bracket and let's do status. And then we could do a count if right here. And then we could do sales and then we could do status and then 
match it to these to find out how many we have that match each one of these, which looks like it's just one for now. So if we add a couple more in here and then we do something like that, and then you can see four, two, and then one, one, one. So that's how you reference the table in formulas is use that table name and then inside brackets, you can do the column name just like that. And that works great. All right, so that is it for today's video on the inventory management tables. And again, the link for this template is in the description below. If you wanna check out some of the other templates, I have other videos on YouTube, so you can check that out. There's a playlist that I have all of them in, and then you can download those templates there as well if you want. If this video was helpful for you, make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, I will see you again soon.